All right. Hello, folks. Welcome back. This is Bill. Finally got me, Bill. What's that, Rick? Happy Friday. Uh, turn off my audio here. All right. Please be quiet. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, this unit, we've been working with parallel lines and intersecting lines. And this seems like an appropriate place to talk about linear equations and review some of the algebra that may be getting a little rusty. So today is all about lines and linear equations. We're gonna begin with what is parallel lines? What does it mean? Two or more lines are parallel. IFF, what does that mean? Why would I write if and only if? Good, it's a biconditional. So I'm telling you it's a valid biconditional, which means it's also a good definition, right? If they have the same slope, then they are parallel. Two lines are perpendicular. Oh, yeah, okay. Are perpendicular. It's one of my favorite words, perpendicular. If their slopes are negative reciprocals. And just a reminder, parallel looks like that, right? And so our symbol would just be two slash lines there. Yes. I just need to follow up. Whereas perpendicular would be a symbol like that. So for two lines to be perpendicular, I said their slopes have to be negative reciprocals. What does that mean? Well, here's a slope of three fourths. What would be the negative reciprocal of that? Reciprocal means upside down. So instead of three over four, it's four over three. And then I need to change the sign. With the absence of any sign in front, I take this to mean positive. So that would mean my negative reciprocal would have to be negative four thirds. This one's a little harder because it says just two. If that were my slope, how would I figure out my reciprocal, my negative reciprocal of that? Yeah. Good. I'd turn this into two over one, which means my reciprocal would be one over two. And because this was positive, this one would be negative. How about number three? What's the negative reciprocal of negative seven eighths? Good, positive eight sevenths. And what's the negative reciprocal of slope of one? Good, because this is really like one over one. So we'd flip it over and still get one over one, but now it would be negative. And lastly, this one messes with people. What's the recipro negative reciprocal of zero? Well, this is zero over one. So the negative reciprocal would be negative zero over, excuse me, negative one over zero. But you can't divide by zero, can you? So this slope would be undefined. We'd call the slope that's the negative reciprocal of zero undefined. So what might that look like? Well, here are some points. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate the slope of AB, in other words, these first two, and the slope of CD, and compare them to see if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 
In order to do this, we should have the equation for the slope. To calculate slope, we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for me to find the slope of AB, what minus what? We want to do y2, we're going to look at the y value of the second point minus the y value of the first point. So six minus three, and then we'll take the difference of the x's in the same order, two minus negative two. Six minus three is three, two minus a negative two is really like two plus two, which is four. So my slope of AB is three fourths. Now we'll do the same thing with the other line, CD. I want to find the slope of CD. I'll take Y minus Y, so three minus zero over three minus negative one. That's going to give me three over four. And then I compare these slopes. Are they the same or negative reciprocals? What do we say? Good, they're the same. So we'll call these two lines parallel. Would you guys please do number two? And if you have time, number three. Calculate the slope of the two lines, compare them, and see if they're parallel or perpendicular or neither. All right, please take a look up on the board here. See how you did. In number two, AB has a slope of two-fifths. CD has a slope of negative five-halves. Those are negative reciprocals. Therefore, these lines are perpendicular. If you had a chance to get to three, it's negative two-thirds, one-fourth. Those don't match up, and they're not negative reciprocals, so you'd say neither. Any questions on finding the slope between two points? Determining whether two lines are parallel based on their slopes. Excellent. So the real goal here should be to look at lines in their whatever format they're given and determine whether they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. That shows a depth of understanding of slope that we're looking for. But before we come to this, I think we better talk about the different formats that lines can come in. So please flip to page two. By the way, you'll see that I've copied and pasted this stuff from all over so the numbers don't fall in sequence at all. Hopefully those of us with OCD tendencies can get over that. The first form of a linear equation that we're most familiar with, I imagine, is slope intercept. It's also called y equals mx plus b, where m stands for the what? Slope of the line. And b stands for the y intercept. Since it's readily visible from an equation like this, what the slope is and what the y-intercept is called, it's called slope-intercept form. So if I look at this equation, this graph, I want to express this in equation form. So I know it's going to be y equals something x something. Let's start with the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept for this graph? It's right there. It's hitting on the one, two, negative three on the y. So I'm going to put a minus three on the end here. And then what's my slope? Well, to figure my slope, I'm going to go from one point counting up one, two, three, four. It's a four over one, two. Four over two. That's not visible at all.
Can we reduce that slope? Yeah, we can make it two. Y equals two X minus three. And I'd like to suggest that you write over here that when we're counting this, what we're counting is that slope is rise over run. How much you go up by how much you go laterally. So would you please find the equations for number two and three now using that same scenario. All right, we've had a few minutes on that. What's our y-intercept for this one? Negative two. And what's our slope? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So is it four over five? No, it's negative. It's negative four over five. Good. And I think it's also worth adding to your notes that if the slope is greater than zero, positive numbers, we expect the slope to be uphill. If the slope is less than zero, we expect a downhill slope. So like when we just did is a downhill slope. So we know that that slope is gonna be negative. This is an uphill slope when I read left to right. So it's positive. So what if it's in between those? What if it's neither positive nor negative? And you guys are getting to know that I've got weird analogies and visualizations of these things. Yeah, I picture that slope is how much harder it is to walk. So if you're walking uphill, a positive number is like an add-on level of effort, makes it harder. When you're going downhill, a negative slope kind of pulls you down. It makes it easier to walk. And when you've got a slope of zero, it's neither harder nor easier. It's just a flat surface. What if the slope is undefined? Well, that's when you can't walk. You'd have to climb because it's vertical like that. All right, this one, we've got a y-intercept of zero. And it goes rise, so it's down one over three, so that'd be negative one-third. You could either write y equals negative one-third x plus zero, although most people just write y equals negative one-third x. Any questions on taking a line and creating an equation in slope intercept form. Okay, now we'll do it backwards. Here's an equation in slope intercept form. In order to graph it, I'm gonna identify the y-intercept first. So negative one, and then I'll apply a slope, rise over run. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Make a mark. I'm then going to use a straight edge of some sort to connect those. How many solutions are there to this equation? I know that's a weird question. We know that there's ordered pairs, right? Values of X and Y that match to fit this equation. And I know that if I put in zero for X, Y would be negative one. That's what my Y intercept is. Turns out every single point along here, as close as you wanted to get, this little thing looks like it would be something like two thirds over and Y equals zero. Whatever that point is, if you found it precisely, it would fit in this equation. It would work to the equation. What about this? What's the y-intercept? One, two, three, four, five, six. What's the slope? It's hard to see because we need a number that's in front of x there. So instead of y equals negative x, we could write this as y equals negative one x plus six, and wouldn't that mean the same thing? 
And then if we put this over one, that gives us the fraction we want to see. Down one, over one. Down one, over one. Down one, over one. So the slope of negative one looks like that. And it's a negative slope. Does that match my little agenda over here? Yeah, less than zero is negative downhill. What about number six? What's my y-intercept? There isn't one, meaning it doesn't hit the y-axis? It's zero. In other words, it does cross the y-axis right there at the origin. And then what's my slope? Two, which I should express as a fraction by putting it over one. So I go up two over one, up two over one. Any questions on graphing from a slope intercept form? Now, I would say this is the easiest form to graph, but there are some times when it looks like it's in that form, but it's a little bit more challenging. And that's when it's these vertical and horizontal lines. So for example, if I'm looking at this line here, What's the y-intercept? That's the y-intercept? That's the x-intercept. There is no y-intercept, is there? It's not zero. There's just no y-intercept. What's the slope? Undefined. Good. You remember that from up here, right? In other words, if I tried to calculate the slope between two points, I'd say, OK, there's a rise. I got three but there's no run. So the slope would be three over zero, which is undefined. So instead we have to think about this differently. This line is a series of points. Like this point is the point negative one comma one. This point is the point negative one comma four. I could plot that point negative one comma zero. And what I'm looking for is an equation that would tie all these points together. What do all these points have in common? Negative one for which value? The equation is x equals negative one. It doesn't matter what y is as long as x is negative one. And the slope then, as we said, is undefined. What about this line? Well, do we have a y-intercept? We do, it's at three. Do we have a slope? There's no rise. I could do a run. Yeah, it's zero over whatever, three, which leaves me zero. So my equation looks like this, y equals zero x plus three, but zero times X is how much? Zero. And zero plus three is how much? Three. So in other words, this equation is Y equals three. There's no X in it. X is irrelevant. Y is just always three. And the slope for this would be zero. Why is it three? Because as you count up, it goes one, two, three. Every value along this line we're looking for has a Y value of three. Okay, please take a few minutes to graph each of these lines in 15, 16, and 17. All right, so when we do Y equals four, 
all we care about is that all of the points have a y value of four. So it'll be horizontal. When x equals negative two, all we care is that all of the x values are negative two. And y equals zero. So all these values along the x-axis are y equals zero. This one? Y is not one or two or three, Y is zero for all those points. Any questions on graphing vertical and horizontal lines? Okay. Yep. All right. So, Although that was the most, right, please. Although that's the most used one, the point, excuse me, the slope intercept form, there's another form called point slope that's really very useful. Let's see how many of you have seen this form before. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. How many of you have worked with this before? Put your hands up. About five of you, okay? That kind of is consistent with my other classes. It's really cool in the sense that you can still see the slope just like you can with slope intercept, but instead of seeing the y-intercept, you can see a different point. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna set it up as a blank slate. This is kind of what it looks like before I put the details in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the Y value of my coordinate, in this case, one, and put it in there. And I'm gonna take the X value of my coordinate, in this case, four, and put it in here. And then I'll take the slope of my situation and put it out front there. And that's a linear equation. Like I'm done. In this particular problem set, they're asking us to write this equation in slope intercept. So we're gonna have to do a little manipulation here. We wanna get y equals mx plus b. So we're gonna multiply through here. y minus one equals, what's this property called that I'm doing? Distributive Excellent, distributive property. And now I got to move this. What's that property called? A little more? Addition what? Of equality, right? We're doing it to both sides of the equal sign. So it's addition property of equality. Okay, what about this one? Y minus what? Four equals, yep, X minus two. And we want to clean it up into slope intercept form. Y minus four equals one half X minus one. Add four, Y equals one half X plus three. Do you think that's faster than what you guys were taught? Which is y equals mx plus b, you plug it in for x, y, and m, solve for b, then write the equation with m and b? Yeah. I think this is a little faster. Would you guys please take a few, uh, question? Sorry, why did you change the x minus two to x minus uh, I distributed the one half. Half times x is one half. Half times negative two is negative one. Okay, please try number three and four yourselves. Okay, folks, so let's go through this real quick. So this one is y minus zero equals two thirds x minus negative six minus a negative six is really like adding six. So we get y is equal to two thirds x plus, when I multiply this, I wanna think about it as two thirds 
times six, but I'm gonna treat this as six over one. Now it's a fraction times a fraction, which is easier. Two times six is 12, three times one is three. And then I can reduce this and say, y is equal to two thirds x plus four. So here, y minus negative one equals negative three fourths x minus negative eight. So really that's y plus one plus negative three fourths x and negative three fourths times eight over one. So minus 24 fourths y plus one equals negative three fourths x minus six yes, yes. minus seven. Any questions on transitioning from point and slope to point slope form and then turning it into slope intercept? Okay. Last form for us is the standard form. Standard form comes in the flavor AX plus BY equals C. And it doesn't often say this, but A must be a positive integer, right? So that if this were negative two or something, you distribute everything by a negative. You have to leave A as a positive. All right, in this case, I want my Y to the left of the equal sign, and it is. When I go for Y equals MX plus B, it's gonna stay there. The problem is this X, that's in the wrong place. So I'm gonna subtract X from this side and I'm gonna subtract X from the other side. That leaves me with Y equals, now I naturally might think to write six minus X, but I know that I want my X first and the six is positive, so I'm gonna make it plus six. And that's now in slope intercept form. If I were so inclined, I could write it as negative one X plus six to help myself see this slope, but either of these would be fine. This is a little more challenging one, but the same process. Minus five X, minus five X. I have two Y equals minus five X or negative five X minus two. And I only want one Y, this is two of them. So I have to divide by two. What's this process called? Division property of equality. In order to do this as a property of quality, I don't just do it on the left. I do it to every term on the right also. So that leaves me with y equals negative five halves x minus one. Now, so many of us have become dependent on calculators and decimals, but I'll tell you what, leaving fractions when you're doing slope makes your world dramatically easier. If you had left this as a fraction, as a decimal of 0.66666 and you rounded it, that'd be super hard to apply in a graph. You don't go rise of 0.66 and a run of one. That'd be hard to make precise. Okay. I'm going to show you one more thing before I give you some time to work on this. We want a graph from standard form. And one way would be to convert it into slope intercept like this, and then graph the way we have. That's what you'll do for 14. But I'd like to suggest for 13, even though this graph isn't perfect for it, that there is a benefit to having it in standard form. How many points do I need to be able to draw a line? Good, two points. As long as I have two points, I can connect them and that's my line. So I'm gonna suggest that here, we're gonna find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And if we can find those two points, it'll graph. What do we know about the x-intercept? Almost. 
it's along the x-axis and every point along the x-axis one zero two zero three zero four zero negative one zero negative two zero what do they all have in common y is zero so if i take my equation and i plug in zero for y I get x minus zero equals eight. So I get my y-intercept really quickly. In this case, it's a little challenging because it's off the graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and be there. For my y-intercept, what do I know about any y-intercept? Zero, one, zero, two, 0, 3, 0, negative 2. The x is 0. So I can take my equation and, oops, 2y equals 8, plug in 0 for x. So negative 2y equals 8, divide by negative 2, and I get y is equal to negative 4. That tells me my y-intercept is negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that gives me two points. Now I did that out exhaustively, but you can also just do it with your finger. If y is zero, I can just block out the y. What is it? What's left? X equals eight. And if I put an X in for zero, I've got negative two y equals eight. Y is negative four. This one won't work that way. Why not? Well, because the, the values, like it worked for this one, right? The y-intercept is going to be one. But for the x-intercept, it'd be five-thirds. That's kind of awkward. So you're better off putting it into slope-intercept form. OK. So what we've got here is a document that's going to give you a little bit of understanding of parallel and perpendicular. We went over slope-intercept point slope, and standard forms. You've got to finish up a couple questions in each of these and go back to the front page to apply it here. You'll want to convert these into slope-intercept form so you can compare the slopes as perpendicular or parallel. And this would be a reasonable refresher of algebra. That's all I'm requiring of you of homework is those three first sides. However, please listen. Next year, you begin to make a choice in your math careers. You can go intermediate algebra or you can go advanced algebra. Advanced algebra prepares you to continue in courses that are high in math, like pre-calculus. If you plan to get into engineering or sciences or mathematics or computer programming, you should have math at advanced algebra and higher, probably through pre-calculus, probably calculus. On the other hand, if you know that you're gonna be an artist and math is never your thing and you don't want it, you could take an easier path next year in intermediate algebra. It does restrict your future math options. You can't go on to pre-calculus from intermediate algebra. You'd have one more course left in the sequence, trig stat. One semester of trig, one semester of statistics. Regardless of which of those is up for you, you need to be familiar with linear equations. In both of those courses, you're required to understand linear equations. I know last year was COVID, and I don't know exactly what your algebra experience was like, and you probably had very different experiences, each one of you. These last two pages are additional problems for you to look at and decide whether you're comfortable in your algebra or not. A lazy person is welcome to not look at these, not do these last two pages. You'll still get full credit for today's work, but you won't put yourself in a strong position for next year. A dedicated student who's looking forward to moving on and having options based on their math mathematical skills should probably do at least some of all of these. Pick and choose if you want. Find the ones that are interesting and when it feels repetitive and redundant, don't do more. The answer keys for these are posted. 
I encourage you to do what you think you need to do to give yourself the best algebraic foundation for the future. There is no extra credit, just improve life opportunities. Better brain. That's all I've got for you. The rest of the period is yours.